So now we have our different images and elements placed on layers and positioned in the scene as we want. In our right viewport, we are currently looking at the end result of the camera. And as I mentioned before, if I go to my tools flyout, there's a whole series of tools you can use to adjust your camera from your dolly, your orbit, your roll, tilt, and so on. But understand when you are using these tools in an actual camera view such as this, I will be affecting the actual camera's position. And I don't want to do that. What I want to do is look at my scene and how we have the elements laid out in 3D space in an arbitrary view. One that is not going to be affecting the camera. So with this viewport active, I can come over to where it says viewing, go to our 3D views, and you'll see there is a working view. And the hotkey is space F4. When I choose that, you'll see that, first of all, there's a different zoom level that's in my working view than there was in my camera view. But I can now take my control and the spacebar and zoom back, and now we see all of our elements that we have placed in 3D space. I want to hide my icons temporarily, so I'm going to hit the I key twice to set it to be icons off, or I could have chose it from this flyout. And then I'm going to hit the O key, which is the orbit tool. Now, granted, I am using the orbit tool that affects the camera, but in this view, we're not looking through the camera. We're looking at our scene in a working view. So if I click and start to drag around, we can see how we have placed the different elements in 3D space. So this is a great view to use when you want to see the positioning of your different elements in 3D space without affecting your camera. I'll hit the M key to go back to my select tool, and then I'll hit F4 once again to return back to our default view of the camera's view. Let's now start creating the look that we want of these different elements that we have, from color corrections to depth of field and different blurring effects. Inside the action tool, you can achieve the same end result in different methods, especially with something such as color correction. It can be applied, as we saw earlier, on the media tab where we have color correction tools for each media source you have brought into the action tool. And then in our node bin, we have the matchbox tool and the lightbox tool, which allow you to go and apply color corrections on different elements, either based with the matchbox tool or with a light. Let's go back to our media tab for right now. This one image right here, the mountain that we have in the background, is only being used once in the scene. So if I want to come in and use a color correction tool here on the media list, it would work fine for this case because we're only using it in one instance. Now, if I did use that in multiple instances and I wanted the color correction to be on all of those instances, this would make sense to do it here. But this other image we have, this Alt Sin Beauty, which is what we've used for all three of these different layers, I want to perform different color correction effects on each one of them. So in that case, we would not want to use the color correction tools in our media list. But let's first focus on our mountain clip. So just like we did with our background, when we were experimenting in the beginning, I'm going to come over where I see it read CC. I'll click on the top box, which then in turn will affect the front. If you wanted to, you could apply a color correction to the mat, but that's not what we're going to do. So again, I'm just going to double click underneath where it reads CC for the mountains media. And we step into the color correction tool. This is the same color correction tool we saw out in batch. It's just being applied to this image through the media list. Now, anything I do to this is obviously going to be affecting just that media. Let me do control Z to undo that. Now, by default, we're looking at the end result of the color correction tool that we are in, and that's why we see just that image. But if you go to the viewing flyout, you get several different options as to what you want to look at, including your front, your back, your mat, your animation channels, or the context. The context is the end result of action, and the hotkey for that is the number four. But I'll choose it from the flyout, and now we are looking at the end result of action. And any adjustment I make again will obviously only affect that layer, but now we get to see the adjustment to that media in context with the end result of the action tool. I'll hit Control-Z once again to undo that. 
Now all I really want to do with the color correction tool is darken this mountain a little bit that's supposed to be further away from the camera than these elements we have closer to the camera. And to do that, I'm going to go to my gain setting for my RGB. I'm just going to start decreasing it. And I just noticed auto key is on by default. That's fine. I really wasn't planning on creating keyframes, but that's all right. I'm just going to take this down. And because we're looking at it in context of the action tool, we can get a good feel as to how dark we want to make it. Let's say we take this down to about 60. So I'm going to enter 60 in my calculator. This looks good to me. I'm happy with that. So that's the color correction that I want to apply to that image. That's it. Now I choose exit. We step back out of the color correction tool and we can see the little check mark again telling us that we've got a color correction tool applied to that media. So now we want to start working on some of these different elements of the rocks that we've placed here inside of our 3D space. So I'll start with this one right here. If I hit the H key repeatedly, we can hide and unhide it. You can see that this is the closest one to the camera. I know I'm repeating myself, but we don't want to do our color correction down here because that would affect all three of them. So what we're going to do is use a matchbox because the matchbox tool has color corrections available to you. Let's go to our node bin once again. So with the image selected, this is important, with this image selected, I'll come down to my tools, my bin, I'll hit the M key, I get the matchbox tool. Now we know there's a matchbox bin back there. We'll look at that in a second. For right now, I'm just gonna double click on the matchbox tool. First of all, I'll switch from titles to proxies so we can see the thumbnails or the proxies. And just like we saw when we applied a matchbox tool in the batch environment, we access the same exact tools. I'll click on the directory or folder for color and then click on the color correct matchbox. So now in my action schematic, let me hold the option key and grab that axis right there. You'll see that an axis, the diffuse image, and the matchbox have all been applied to the image that I had selected. If I double click on our color correct for the matchbox, we get the parameters for the color correct tool. And this is a very similar tool, almost identical to the color correction tool we've looked at in batch and also one that we just applied to the other image, those mountains in the background. So if I come to my color wheel and I start making adjustments to this, obviously we're going to see it's affecting only the image that it's applied to. Control Z to undo that. You have your shadow parameters, your midtone parameters, highlight parameters, different controls such as midpoint position, suppression RGB, suppression CMY, just like the other color correct tool, lots of different parameters. First of all, I notice auto key is on again. I'm going to turn that off. And now under histogram on our controls panel, I'm going to go and click in the first field on the left and start dragging to the right, keeping an eye on the scene. I want to darken that up a little bit. I'll set it at 0 0.04. All right, so we've darkened it up a little bit. I'm happy with the adjustments that we made. Now let's go and add another matchbox tool. This one's going to be very similar to the pixel spread tool that we used in the batch environment while working on our mats. But as far as the matchbox tool, it's called the parallax spread. So to do this, we go back to our node bin, and I want to make sure I have the diffuse image that was created when we applied our color correction matchbox. Not this, don't select this image. We want to apply the new matchbox to the diffuse map that is part of the original matchbox that has the color correction on it. And now instead of applying the matchbox where I double click on it in my all nodes bin, I'm going to go to the matchbox bin itself. Here we can access every single matchbox that is available to you. I'll hit the P key to show only the tools that start with the letter P, and I'll double click on Parallax Spread. And you'll see that it is added and attached to the diffuse that was created when we applied the color correction matchbox tool. I'll zoom in, control space bar. I want to look at the edge of the mountain that we're working on and I'll double click on the Parallax Spread Matchbox tool. Now, just like the Pixel Spread tool that we looked at earlier, there is a setting already set for the amount for the Parallax, which is set to one. If I set this back to zero, you can see that white edge that we have along the top of the mountain. And that's what we're trying to get rid of. But that's what this tool does. Just as we learned earlier, we can push the color information past the mat's edge. As I scrub the amount slider and you look right at that edge, you can see what we're doing. So as I said, a value of one, the default, is going to do a really nice job of cleaning up that little white edge that we saw along the top of the mountain. 
All right, so that's good. I'm happy with that. Let's zoom back a little bit in our view, or I can just hit the Fit button. And we can organize our nodes. I'm holding the Alt or Option key, and we can move these around anywhere we want to just to keep this all nice and clean and neat as we start to add more nodes. Let's move over and start working on some more of these images. So we'll work on this image. And then once again, I can hit the H key to hide and show exactly which one we're going to be working on. With the image selected, I go back to my node bin. I'll hit the C key once again to get our color correction tools, and I'll just double click on color correct. Just as before, we get an axis, the diffuse, and the new color correct matchbox tool applied to this image. I wanna make this rock even a little darker than this one, so I'm just gonna to come to my master gain and start dragging that down, bring that to about 75 or so, 79, just to get it a little darker than this one. I'll actually enter 0.80 as a exact amount that I want to use. Then I'm gonna right click over my parallax that I have applied to the other image, choose duplicate. It gives me another parallax. I'll click off of my diffuse image and drop it on the second parallax. We can again zoom in to see exactly what we just did. I'll double click on the parallax. This one we might need to add a little bit more. So with the parallax amount at two, I'm happy with this. Let's work on our last image, which is this guy right here. And again, let me just kind of organize my nodes a little bit. I'll select the image itself, go back to our node bin, hit the C key over the matchbox, double click color correct, and we get the same procedure. Actually, this one we want to warm up or brighten up a little bit. So I'm going to come over to my offset contrast and take that and just adjust it to, to about 0 0.020, just to brighten that one up a little bit. And then again, I wanna duplicate my parallax. So I'll select the other parallax that's applied to this image. This time I'm gonna hit Control D. That's the hotkey for duplicating. Instead of right clicking and choosing duplicate, as you can see, Control D is the hotkey for that. And we'll drag off of our diffused image and drop it on there. And immediately you see how that cleaned up that edge. All right, that's going to end this video. In the next video, we're going to start looking at our camera effects inside the action tool.